My guest is a comedian and marijuana enthusiast. He's a founder of The Dope Show, a comedy showcase where comedians perform sober and under the influence of marijuana. I'm excited to welcome Tyler Smith. Hey. And also John Gard. I'm on the couch. <laughs> I, I fuck that up immediately. What? I got all nervous. You jumped into it so fast. I, yeah, I didn't I, even know we were doing this. I know. So. Yeah, it, <laughs> Do you want to try it again? No. Oh, okay. Run it back. I, I thought somebody farted like as soon as I sat down. I was, like, you, I was gonna ask you, but it was oh, gonna man. ruin the flow. Because you heard it or smelled it. Sm I thought I smelled something. I left the bathroom door open. It might be my that poop might from be earlier. that. That was he came in, he got settled, and he made a brown, and it was just <laughs> right was away. I asked permission impressive. though. <laughs> 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 I just want to let you know I'm comfortable. <laughs> just marking your is territory. This your home? I'm gonna shit in there. Yeah. Which bathroom is mine? <laughs> do you have guest bathrooms is that the only bathroom yeah, the it's one you, which one do you poop in? that's where i want to poop that's where i want that's the <laughs> to poop on top of your poop. there was pee in the toilet i i almost did poop on oh, your pee but i flushed was it. there pee in there there was pee in oh there. my bad i heard you flush but god this is a weird way to it's fucking good. start this <laughs> episode <laughs> live alone they get into their own little oh, you yeah. know, habits and rituals yeah. like my wife showed me this video yeah. last night of like this it's like a radio show it's apparently a really famous video where this guy is like because i don't know why people worry so much about getting poop on their hand you can poop on your hands every time you poop and the lady's like wait what <laughs> the fuck are you talking about like what and he's like because you can't you catch the poop every time so like i don't know why people are being so and she's like whoa 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 like wow. what the you 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 don't catch the poop <laughs> like you don't what the fuck is wrong with you? he's like oh you telling me you've never done like all y'all just poop straight into the toilet like straight just let it you fall in fucking slam dunk it in. <laughs> that's how you get it to the back of the bowl <laughs> it's a problem when people live alone you know they get into these horrible habits of leaving leaving urine yeah in the toilet just a fucking animal it was that. in the sink too it's <laughs> it's just so weird like i remember growing up like oh fuck it i'll just tell it like my dad, I went to the bathroom with him, and he didn't wash his hands after he took a piss. Mm. And I was like, you Wait, didn't? Who? My dad. And who? Huh? Your dad just went to the bathroom by himself? No, we, I, we were in the bathroom together. He pissed, and you, like, learned in school you got to wash your hands after yeah. every time you go to the bathroom. And so my this dad's is a, like. This is when you were a kid? I was, like, maybe, uh, I don't know, eight, seven or eight at the time. Very impressive. And I'm like, age. do you not wash your hands after you go pee? And he's like, not every time. And I'm like, <laughs> what do you mean? And he's like, well, I don't touch my dick. Like, I just get it out. And, like, why do I need to wash my hands? Wait, he like, doesn't touch his dick. You, I, I don't know. I mean, you it, just, you just does he, like, do the butters? Somebody else comes up. Pull and your <laughs> pants all the way down. Yeah. I don't. And lift your shirt up. I think at You're one point. You're the one point, holding my dick, son. Why would I wash my hands? <laughs> Go wash your hands. <laughs> I think at one point he said, it's like my dick is clean. My and dick I'm like, is clean. Mm. That's, I guess that's that's a fair argument. It's a I've weird. definitely heard people say that before, where someone looks at the sink and goes, I trust my dick more than that sink, and then just walks out of the bathroom. I respect that. Like that light um, of, yeah. But I don't, I always I don't say trust like, yeah, but I'd, <laughs> yeah. I'd rather touch that sink than your dick. But all right. It's in that movie, Shape of Water, too. <laughs> you know, you've seen Shape of Water where like the the, the shitty agent the guy man never washes his hands. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not the lizard man. He's like, I live in the water. No. <laughs> what are supposed to do? Just jazz hands underwater. Well, I wash my hand. <laughs> <laughs> that's an, I imagine that's the monster speaking English. Uh, the, the the agent guy. He's like the he walks into the bathroom. And uh, before he pees, he's like, I'm a man who does things in a very particular order because I know myself to be clean and da, da, da. like, <laughs> and I get it. It's like, you go, okay, so I just got up, I took a shower, cleaned my penis, mm -hmm. and then I put clothes on. No, nothing has touched my penis. Yeah. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I touch doorknobs, money, credit cards, keys, steering wheel door da, 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 all that shit i'm yeah. more, you should be more worried about your dick this is like what's that condo or maria condo or whatever where like she has the maria calendar 
Maria, the, like, yeah, Maria Kellner. Where she has the order of fucking... Lasagna. Do, like, God, I hate both of you. <laughs> <laughs> there's like, there's this book that like people like got obsessed over and went and yeah. started watching Netflix yeah. where like you have to like roll your clothes a certain way and you do it all. If you do it in this order, it, it with, saves all you this do it time. With great care. Yeah. Mm. Does you say does and this presents. bring me joy? Does it bring me joy? No. No. No way. I can, I can say goodbye to yeah. it. Crumple it up. But then I like this garbage. shirt. I love it, so I will fold it with great care. Yeah. She's very like delicate. So you're like, like that condo. with your cock. Yeah. With great care. I fold it back <laughs> into my head. Yes. You bring so much skin. joy. <laughs> <laughs> so much joy. Hey, before we get into it, I just want to say, like, don't fucking do that thing where you hit the back of my leg during this. <laughs> I was gonna this say this episode. Like, his life, had, why you tell him that? He, he <laughs> I thought like, that too. He does this thing. It's not fucking funny. It's weird and it's not funny. Um, where he slaps the back and it's it's not even some a of slap. us. It's some little, of us don't like. It's weird and it's not funny. And you need to stop. Uh, this is the casting couch, isn't it? <laughs> I don't know. I just started doing this dumb thing a little while ago, where I'm coming up behind other comics and just give them a little smack on the back mm. of the leg. Not a butt smack. A thigh smack? The no, back like of a the back of the knee. Like Oh, a way low. Yeah, like it's and that's like that's why it's so like <laughs> I guess it's kind of it's, it's just it's, almost it's jarring like a butt slap. But it's not but it's a butt weird slap. Weird and it's not funny, and right? It's, <laughs> It's some people really don't like it. <laughs> another, I personally think comic. it's fucking hilarious, but somebody else yeah. had a, a big problem with it recently. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah another, so. you, usually people just kind of laugh at it. And then like one night I did it to Chris Mejia and you and yeah. uh, mm. and uh, Nikita, right? Yeah. And there was just this whole weekend of like... Which us. one of them had a problem with it? None of them. No, no. it's none of them, okay. but it just started this whole thing. And then over the weekend uh we can't say uh, yeah we can't say who had a problem with it but uh can we just edit it out (laughs) (laughs) we'll tell you afterwards and it'll make sense but anyway the guy the guy didn't like it and uh it's so funny but he didn't tell me he kind of laughed and like but then i felt like i was like Mm. is this guy gonna me to me did i assault him (laughs) the back of the leg to get me to by uh I'm, i'm guessing a straight performer you know, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm you just never playing know, right? guess who at this point. <laughs> <laughs> we'll tell Straight you afterwards. Male, female? <laughs> but the, the main point? fucking thing is don't do that during this episode. You, well, okay. You're making me feel so uncomfortable. No, I know. I know. Is that it's, in it's, it's intentional. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Tyler, let's fucking talk about you. Cool. Um, do you like being touched in the back of the day? I, uh, it depends on by who. I <laughs> 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 Okay, so when did you get into stand up? Um, I've been doing comedy for thirteen years now. It's fucking hot in here, isn't it? <laughs> it's all this knee slapping <laughs> get me going. Thirteen years, go ahead. <laughs> thirteen years. Uh yeah, I've been performing since I think that's two thousand nine when I first went up. September twenty six, two thousand nine. Remember the exact day? Yeah. Wow. It was recorded and it's nice. in my Facebook memories, so every day I'll well, not every day, but once oh, a year. That's wild. <laughs> Where'd you go? Um, the first one was at Laughs Now, but it was Giggles back then. Okay. And that was, was it Terry? Terry was it? the one, yeah. Yeah. He uh, <laughs> he knew, so I had brought like 20, 25 people the first time. Always always been a big ticket sailor. Uh, first time it came out, brought out like 25 people. And like, I had no idea... Like, I didn't know anything about, like, in comedy. Like, if you do that at an open mic, you're not going to go up first or within the first 20, probably. Oh, yeah. Because they're like, yeah. as soon as that guy goes up, the audience is gone. Yeah. So. And they'll I, uh, stop buying drinks. And they'll stop buying drinks. So uh, they put me up real late. Um, and at the time, the host was this guy. And I think his name was Carrie. Uh, I'm, I'm not really sure about it. Carrie or Casey or something. I don't know. He had, like, a an androgynous name but he um he was a stand-up comedian and he fucking i guess he'd been doing the open mic hosting there for i don't know since the place fucking opened because he seemed very jaded about his life and uh super excited there's finally a crowd there so before i go on he fucking does this act that was like i don't even know how old this act is but 
he brought out a box that had a big letter B on it. And then he um, put these shoes that strapped around his knees and he got behind the box and then started dancing like he was a little person, you know, like with his, the shoes on his knees were dancing on the box. Like he was a little person and he was just doing this thing. And he was uh, performing as um, a very famous porn star, <laughs> you know, uh, oh, her name Bridget? rhymes with her disability. Yeah, Bridget. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Okay. Uh, her I know name Bridget. rhymes with her uh, her slur, I guess. <laughs> but what's her slur? <laughs> <laughs> what's Bridget's slur? It's not Bridget, the little person. <laughs> it's else that rhymes with it. But uh, um, so he does this like he goes up there and he starts stripping and he's and there's like this uh, video or uh, audio playing on the sound system of like a, a chipmunk singing, you know, like the little chipmunks like they yeah. have, like, cast up a voice and he's doing this. What song? I mean, it was it was specific to that act. <laughs> so I'm only guessing that he might have pre-recorded this or found this recording. The teaches God, of damn. Peaches. Or, but this is definitely chipmunk. an act that could be passed down since the start of comedy. Like this was like. <laughs> yeah. This, this is, is not what I thought you were going to say like when I asked the, you about He's your like one of the Knights nice Templar of comedy. So I found out. the video. Like, there is a video of oh, that wow. that I found. And I like, this was, I couldn't believe it because I found it like nine years into comedy. Like, nine years later, I found out that they, that he had recorded his set before I recorded my set because it was like, you know, he had never seen a crowd that big before. <laughs> the open so mic he just... Before. So he was super stoked. This was finally, his moment. Finally, the world's going to see like, my yeah. very original act. <laughs> I'm going to fucking make a great tape. I'm going to submit it to other clubs. I'm going to get the fuck out of here. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> finally get the fuck out of here. But Fast yeah. as my little legs will carry me. So he did that, and it was, it like, it just, to follow that as an untrained first time doing comedy, and then he's like, so now he's he's topless with nipple tassels on. What the fuck? Yeah, like, it, <laughs> like, it kept going. It wasn't, like, a short little, like, couple minutes. It was 15 minutes of this man stripping and singing along to a chipmunk voice. Wow. And, like, all my friends were like, what the fuck is Tyler doing with his life? Is this what he's going to do? So... I go up there and I'm just like, what? I don't even know what the fuck that was. <laughs> and like, well, I'm glad I had to follow that. I think it's exactly what I said. And then just kind of went and did my set. But that was my first time doing comedy. Oh, man. <laughs> it's just weird how comedy and magic go together. That wasn't magic. Such... That was not magic. <laughs> I think part of it was. <laughs> Magic can be subjective. That story was magic. Yeah. I think comedy is subjective and magic is not. <laughs> Just some of this shit. I remember when laughs had their like true open mic. There was one guy like you just get these random people coming through like the, the walk ups. And there was one guy. He was like fucking 6'10". And he... I don't, I can't, even, he had a name, like a stage name or whatever. Name. They always have the stage name. They usually have a name. Mm. But he got down on his, like he put his shoes, took his shoes off, put them down on the floor, put his knees into them. And like, oh, yeah. then he started pretending he was a little person. And it was like. Or like an average person, I guess at that point. Yeah, it was. Yeah, he's, <laughs> like, <laughs> he's still like four feet He was feet a big tall. little nerd. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it was a character. The fuck, it was uncomfortable. Like, just oh, yeah, it ices the room so hard and with nipple tassels. Oh, yeah, like back then, I feel like little people or that even movement wasn't even like the PC culture hadn't hit so oh, hard yeah. in Seattle. Like, nearly as obvious as you can tell, that was the fucking open mic host. Like, nowadays, you might as well just be like taping your eyes down to do some sort of accent or fucking putting on blackface or some shit. Yeah. Like, it's just like, yeah. oh my God. That's fucking I, wild. I think about some of the jokes that were super like popular and like really hilarious when I first started comedy. And I'm like, you could not be telling that joke. I know. <laughs> I, I wasn't a comedian at the time. Like, that was my first time. And I, I was like, I knew that that guy was too old to be doing it <laughs> that he needed to quit and i'm like okay this isn't the club that i'm gonna come to regularly is what i realized at that moment oh wow what who like prior to getting in though who were your influences like what? um 
Well, so the, the comedian that like literally brought me that night was J.R. Berard. Mm-hmm. Um, he and I had known each other since we were like 17. We went to college together and ran into each other at a gym after we graduated college. He was doing comedy and that's how I got in there. Um, but my biggest influence for comedy back then, like I was a huge fan of Mitch Hedberg and um, uh, yeah, Mitch Hedberg was probably the biggest one. He was like the only one that I really knew of back then. Like I, yeah. like um, I didn't know a whole lot of comedy before going into it. Like I knew of like Jerry Seinfeld and like, you know, all the, all the, the classics. But to me that, that was, that was almost lost on me because it was such an old generation and I didn't grow up in America. So like, Oh, you didn't No, I, I, I grew up in Germany and Saudi Arabia. I moved here when I was like 11. So when I got here, like a lot of that older style humor, I was already like, this is, this is problematic. <laughs> are you, are, are you German or what? No, I grew up in the military. Okay. Uh, but like, so I grew up on ma- ma- American bases, but those were like very separated, you know, like, yeah, you, there was an internet. <laughs> like there, like you, What'd I you might do? Well fucking German. I played outside. Yeah. Like I played tag and. We made bow and arrows out of sticks with rubber bands and we used to play with our imagination. <laughs> uh, but I had a Nintendo, but I grew up kind of like almost in, you know, it's military. So it was very religious. So like my first games I was playing, like I had Bubble Bobble and Mario, but I also had like Noah's Ark and his adventures. <laughs> fucking super Noah's Ark. Super Noah's I Ark. hate that game, dude. Those animals Nobody are coming at you. Yeah, it. no, I played it. <laughs> I played Noah's Ark. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, uh, super was, Noah's Ark. I love Bubble Bobble. <laughs> <laughs> Bubble Bobble's great, man. The <laughs> animals come at you and the only way you can get them to, like it was like uh, Doom. Like they basically <laughs> took what Doom was and had animals and like instead of capture. No, you throw food at them so they leave you alone. We might have played a different game. Noah's. Ark. I played su- <laughs> like Super Noah's Ark. Super. Oh, yeah, so super you like Nintendo. flick the food at them and they oh, no. ran away from you. This was definitely a side scroller where you gather one of each a boy and a girl and you bring them back to your ark <laughs> oh that's of the, the animals yeah that's no mine was creepier than mine mine was very religious oriented <laughs> like this one was teaching you bible verses and stuff you know that's wild yeah okay so what when did you make it to the states uh i had no idea about any of this right? by the yeah. way i didn't know that you were i know i don't you know I guess have an accent or anything. No, <laughs> I thought you were like half something though. Are you? Yeah. You look half something. I don't I know. Get if that a lot. Yeah. Uh, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm proportionate sizes of all the things, I guess. Uh, yeah. Half full. I like it. <laughs> um, no, I, I, uh, I'm a bunch of white. I did find out recently that um, through our, like the 23 and me that I do have oh, like some yeah, indigenous blood. Okay. I'm leaning hard on that now because I'm trying to get into more comedy festivals. You so, yeah, I am half. Indigenous, <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> like American. Indigenous in- American, yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Wampanoag. I have, I have, I have Viking on my 23 and Me. Oh. Yeah. Like, nice. I, have, I like the I show. Like the North. Yeah. yeah thank you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> pretty sure they're my cousins. Uh, but, yeah, I, 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 I was, like, so hoping I would get Indigenous. Really? Yeah, I wanted mm. to be Native American. Really? So bad. Why? I, I love all that history. All I've, I love the history of like the Lakota tribes and like sitting. I've, I've read all this stuff mm. about Sitting Bull. Have you read Black Elk Speaks? No, I, I just crazy found out. Horse. So I'm, oh, now I'm trying that. to get into my. And then history. I'm like, I'm um, just a bunch of different kinds of white. Yeah. <laughs> all the whites. Culturally, I'm all bunch of whites yeah we're so. 50, 50 shades of white yeah exactly <laughs> I sh- every episode we do together you share some random thing about you it's like oh i'm all i'm also very into native american history <laughs> like, I, am. I had no knowledge i, I of love history until right I now love, I, I love history in general i love that's, that's interesting yeah okay uh, back to tyler yeah yeah when no. did you make it to the state so you made 10? the mistakes in 96 95 i think okay so you were like 10 years old or something 11 Okay. Yeah. When did you get into the weed? Uh, 14. 14? Yeah. What was that <laughs> experience years. I had like? to make friends first. <laughs> <laughs> Took me three years to make cool friends. <laughs> and then you, that's fucking early though, right? It's ninth yeah. grade? Yeah. You know, again, 
internet was just getting developed. So yeah. uh, we didn't have a lot of ways to entertain ourselves. It's funny. We're, we're the same age and you're, you're saying like, Oh, like 14. And for the, I'm like, Oh yeah, me too. Me too. <laughs> like, it's so funny. Like, yeah. Yeah. like, yeah, it's about when I smoke weed. Right. First time. Like, so. Now I think even People, your childhood, I was like, yeah, I made some bows and arrows. Like, we played outside. It was what we did all day. Yeah, <laughs> like, we uh, used our imagination and ran and exercised. The whole neighborhood. We used to play yeah. neighborhood games. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, Manhunt, where it would be like, man you know, one person man- was yeah. it, and then he would tag you, then two people were it, and those people, and you grow until you got everybody in the neighborhood. Oh, it's the best. It was great. I did that stuff to you guys, okay? Like, fuck, yeah, fuck both of you. Yeah. I... We played this thing called basketball. It was this orange ball. You, you have to, to you, you have to bounce it though. That's yeah. the thing. You With your hands, I don't like how this it. podcast is going right now. <laughs> My mom old had guys, an old church bell or old school bell. That, oh, that's how I you four, call people home. Yeah, I have four brothers. We had a, so we were all outside, and there's no cell phones, and she never knew. How would she call you, John? She would literally go out the front Cowboy. door. And, and people would make fun of. There's, there's your bell. Yeah. You go home. <laughs> Mine was uh, one of those ri- ridge tubes that you whirled. Oh, you remember those? Wah, wah, wah. It's like, oh, that's my parents. That's my wah, guys. Wah, wah, wah. That's kind of dope, though. Yeah, every kid in the neighborhood had like a, a sound they retreated home to. We're like penguins. <laughs> <laughs> we all knew our certain song that brought us home. <laughs> Everybody fun. hated the symbol family. Oh, yeah. So loud. Okay, let, let me ask some questions to you guys. It, we got to get some symbol. kind of. It was such a <laughs> traction here. So, um, you got into smoking weed fourteen. What? Yeah, yeah. What was that like? Like, do you- um, I remember the first time we did it, we scraped my friend's dad's metal pipe for resin. So, Jesus. like, yeah, it was like not a graceful entrance into marijuana. I was like, this tastes like garbage, but it it kind of left like a powdered sugar taste in my mouth. So I was kind of excited about it. But then I had the giggles that I, like I've never had giggles before, and I was always kind of like an introverted, um, yeah, kid. So it hit you the first time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it wasn't one of those things where like you gotta hit it twice or whatever. Like, uh, or the second time you smoke, you gotta let it build up in your body before you get high or some yes. shit. <laughs> Dude, that happened that to they me. They tell people that don't Took actually seven, take big hits. <laughs> seven times, like I fucking. I, I thought I was like immune to it, and then like Sweet. on the seventh really? time it hit me, I was by myself. I was like, "What the fuck is happening?" Like, it was it was wild. That's funny. It's not like that for me. I was like, for, right away, first time. I'm very high. Yeah, it might not have been I weed. That I was smoking. Yeah. Could not. Right. It could have been um, salvia. <laughs> it could have been meth. I, 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 I just Salvia. feel really excited. <laughs> <laughs> Salvia was weird, dude. That shit was. Did you ever smoke yeah, it? Yeah, I remember that was something that people kept telling me that you had to smoke it repeatedly before it actually did anything. Really? Yeah. And then I, never, I did. I, I was taking it. like bong rip after bong rip at this like fucking music festival. Of and Salvia? Of Salvia, yeah. I was just like ripping bong rips of it. And then by the fourth one, I went to this like huge pant, like. Not like a panic, but like a, a panic of laughter. Like I just couldn't stop laughing. But at the same time, somebody was doing something really fucking dumb. So I honestly I couldn't tell you. It could have just been really funny. It could have just been really funny. Have you ever used that stuff? No. Salvia? Yeah, hey, you get super like distorted it for like a minute. It's almost like a nitrous or something. Like you just like, like the go into du- this like air duster. Yeah, yeah. I've never done that either, but you should try it when you see it. It was fun. Have you seen that episode of Intervention? Yeah. The walking on sunshine girl. <laughs> Seems fun. She doesn't remember any of her problems. <laughs> She's walking on sunshine, guys. So dusty in here. <laughs> God damn it. So, do you like, are you a daily smoker now? Yeah, I smoke pretty regularly. Um, you can hear it when I gasp for air right before I start talking. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I smoke every day. And how, like, was that almost immediate when you like got into it when you were younger or is it? No. Um, like I smoked a lot for years, um, but I couldn't smoke every day when I was younger. Cause you know, like who could afford that? Like, yeah. It, I remember it took me like paychecks to be able to buy anything. Um, Cause you know, I was working at Safeway when I was 15 for like, I think it was $4 or $5 an hour. Is that what I was making? Yeah. Um, 
and then weed costs the same. It's been the same price. Now it's a little bit more expensive, but that's just because you can get higher end products. But it's always been, you know, around several hundred dollars for an ounce. And several hundred dollars is like a whole fucking month. How much <laughs> was it for an eighth? When $40. You, 40 bucks when you <laughs> yeah. were younger? Yeah, 20 sack is $20. An eighth is $40. It's always been that way. It was how 50 weed, in Minnesota. How is weed immune to inflation? Um, well, now it now it's become like there's, you know, tiers of product level. Yeah. As before, it was like everything was kind of like the same. I think. Yeah. Um, I remember that Texas weed growing up. It was all the same. It was like, right. Yeah. Like you could get like $40 for an ounce and you could just, mm. I mean, you're rolling all of it. That's fair. So you're not like, you know, <laughs> but. Fair enough. Yeah, I don't know. It was a. Uh, I remember when I was really young, though. I, I figured out that if I bought an ounce and I sold some of it to my friends, that I could make some of it back mm-hmm. and smoke for free, and that nice. was pretty problematic early on. <laughs> and like, where are you at with it now, though? Because you're, you like, like I made a career out of it. So, um, like, in two thousand nine, I was working in medical marijuana. Mm-hmm. Um, was making like edibles and stuff like that. Uh, but you know, I don't know, like my, my intake of weed kind of goes up and down, um, depending on whatever's going on in my life right now, everything's kind of like chill. So I just smoke as much as I want. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got no stresses. So, you know, what would be like, cause I, I just don't indulge like what, what's like a heavy consumption day. Um, yesterday I hung out with one of my buddies and he's got, um, He's been going through like some pretty bad, you know, about with cancer. So he and I got really ripped last night. We smoked probably like, like three grams of oil and, um, probably like two joints on top of that, which is a lot. Like, what? What is? I don't, that's, that's like a ninety dollars worth of weed, I guess, between two yeah. people. Yeah. It's like Jesus. ninety dollars. Yeah. But like, at what point do you do you keep getting? More fucked up, or is um, it like at one point it just kind of caps out, and then my body is kind of you know used to functioning at a capped out level, <laughs> like uh, uh, you know, like in those anime cartoons when the guys like drop all their weights off and, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. and they can run real fast. <laughs> like, that's how I am with weed, like, I'm just always really high, so I'm always you He's know, the Rock Lee of weed. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> yeah that's uh, that's sort of something that like i guess confuses me a little bit is like are there if you're high all the time mm-hmm. like how is that any different than how you normally are like you just it's true like well, i guess i'm not it's like keeping a buzz versus getting <laughs> know, in, right? intoxicated or what right i would say during the weekends i'm i'm pretty much high the entire time but during the weekdays now i i have like a, a day job and i have to function so like now it's like a I only smoke when a classic dad would drink type of thing, mm-hmm. you know, like I'll have like nine or 12 joints after work. <laughs> really? <laughs> Just to, don't fucking bother me. <laughs> I'm just going to go to my room. No. And what, like, what are you typically doing when you are high? Like what's your go-to shit? Um, I mean, I read a lot. I write, I draw. Um, I try and keep creative. I also will just stare at TikTok for like 30 hours or something, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, all the things. Pretty sure we're soulmates. <laughs> yeah, because you, I mean, I guess <laughs> weed is super popular with comics. And mm-hmm. what would you, either one of you guys say, like benefits and drawbacks of it? Well, if you uh, are an alcoholic and you're a comedian, you can only do a couple shows a week. And it's really hard to get to them. And it's really hard to get home from them. Yeah. But if you smoke weed... You can, uh, you know, forget about the fact that you even do comedy. (laughs) (laughs) But, uh, no, no, you can do what, you know, you can, I feel like you can manage more if uh, you're on a drug that, you know, uh, doesn't mess with your uh, cognitive abilities to travel. Honestly, it it puts me in a better mood to do things that I don't want to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, if I have to do, like, I don't know. I used to, I used to love smoking weed before I would like have to do like something with like construction, like fixing something around the house or like, cause I, I like when I was renovating my, my house in California, I was like, mm. you got to do just like simple shit for hours. That's the best. You have for a sure. good mood about it. 
Also, Does it I need love, to... re- love reading. Yeah, yeah. yeah I just, just really enjoy a book more. Mm-hmm. Does it have to be like a particular strain for that type of shit? I mean, there's like, yeah. or what are your thoughts on that? I guess you. Um, I mean, I definitely have strains that I do things on. Like, I I got joints on me right now, and these are my my hanging out talking joints. If you wanna, can I go, smoke? Yeah, it? Yeah, I don't give a shit. Tight. I mean, oh, yeah, pretty cool. Crack the window. I'll uh, I'll finish this and make this an ashtray. <laughs> that works. But uh. Uh, yeah, I have talking weed and then I have, I have my go to sleep weed that is like a lot stronger, more expensive, you know, that I keep in a nicer jar. Yeah. Yeah. Like uh, sedate it, sedates you. Yeah. A little bit. And that's like, you know, it's mostly, it's not even just weed. It's like moon rocks and shit, you know, which are, that's weed rolled in yeah. oil. Yeah. Yeah. And what's the oil though? Like it's, it's weed. It's weed. It's, <laughs> wax, it's more weed. wax, right? Or whatever they call it. Like. Uh, so they use some sort of solvent to dissolve all of the trichomes off of the plant. And then all that washes off ends up becoming this oil or wax, which is essentially just the, the melted THC crystals. Because I've seen like the press to get the wax, like where they take the flower yeah, yeah. and they, it's, it's like heated, right? Like it's yeah, you can do hot, that. Yeah, for sure. That's they a, that's take two pieces of, of paper and press it down, and then it's all the shit around it. Yeah, mm-hmm. all around. But okay. um, tell me more. Yeah, that's that's how it looks. <laughs> that's what. It <laughs> and then they just sort of scrape it and then roll it in that shit. Yeah. Like, so this is why I don't really understand. Like, is there an analogy that works for this? Of I guess like, it'd be like dropping a shot in a beer type of thing. Okay. You know, that works because what it is, I mean, with marijuana, you're smoking the same thing, but you have all that plant in there and the plant matter. Mm-hmm. But with the, the oil, you've removed all the plant matter and now it's just a Pure. higher concentrate. Yeah. yeah. So They're super strong. A marijuana nugget would have like 26 percent THC, while a gram of oil would be like around 90 or something like that. God damn. And that's those are like dabs. Yeah. Too. Do you fuck with that? Uh, I try not to, um, just because they fuck up your lungs. Or they, at least they fuck my lungs up more than just bringing in, you know, charred plant matter. <laughs> I'm, I'm real big on taking care of my lungs. Yeah, and my body's a <laughs> temple, so I try not to burn oil at the entrance. <laughs> just sage. <laughs> what What is the effect of it, though? Like, I'm, I'm is that totally... Is Because I use one of those pins. Yeah. Is that so worse for you than feels smoking? Like so if you look at the machines that they have built I'm that, like, like show you like what your lungs turn into after you do like a thousand joints. Have you seen those? They like put like a big wad of cotton in one and then smoke a thousand joints through it. And then they put a big wad of cotton in the other one. They smoke like a thousand grams of oil through I it. I wonder what the cotton in my lungs looks like. <laughs> well, it probably looks like the oil one, <laughs> which honestly, it still looks like cotton. So it was still white and like, but it wasn't fluffy anymore. It was like all congealed and it looked like. Uh, just like snot and stuff. So it was just like heavy wads of crap. What did the joint one look like? Uh, it looked like the inside of somebody's bong. <laughs> you know, just fucking fucked. So I got to so take both care of this. are not I've good been, though. I've been no, neither sure. one are good. Okay, you shouldn't do anything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've been pretty. I've been pretty sure we we're gonna have a I'm lesson dying. of like of which one you can do safely. No, no they're both. It's like, how do you want to die? Do you want to like yeah. drown or get holes torn into your? Yeah, that must be. Tricky, like is a. It's more like how fast do you want to do how it? How fast you know do you want to get? Yeah. How quick do you want to get out of this rat race? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, do you do you like fuck with edibles instead then to like limit that stuff? Or because I, I mean, I'm not here forever, man. I'm not trying to stick around forever. <laughs> yeah. But <laughs> I I'm just yeah, spills man, on him. Why are you all over? Man. I'm not gonna be here forever either. Look, I just remember this kid. <laughs> This kid in college that like lived across the hall from me smoked pot like all fucking day. And I'm not saying that judgmentally, just like he had like the wick or whatever to light so that he mm, wasn't getting wick. the butane yeah, yeah, like yeah. in his lungs and stuff. And I never even thought of it. He's like, yeah, no, I'm it. fucking I'm smoking this all the time. Like over time it builds up and I it makes sense mm-hmm. like every fucking day. But yeah. Does that does the health aspect of it like fuck with you or do I like, am I um, worried about whether or not I'm shortening my lifespan by smoking all the time? Yeah. Um, no, I'm aware of it. 
and I'm okay with it. <laughs> yeah, it's about how bad you want those last 10 years, you know? Yeah. Cause could, I, could I go at 80? Do I do I think about, 90? I try and be moderate. I'm trying to moderate my smoke. I don't, I'm not smoking all the time. It's not, I don't smoke as much as I used to, that's for sure. But uh, I also got to enjoy my life because if I just want to be healthy and stick around the whole time, like, what the fuck am I doing? Yeah. yeah. Do you always perform high? No, I actually perform sober. And really? It's like one of the things about the dope show is everybody thinks I'm really stoned. But that's just part of my personality, baby. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I thought that. I was like, yeah, because I, 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 I don't. I don't get high before I perform either. Like, mm. and, and it's not fun. <laughs> it's it's fun when everybody knows you fun. are. Like the dope show makes it fun, but otherwise right. it's not. Because like that, I cannot believe that you don't smoke weed before you perform. I I thought that was like a layup. It may no. It makes you like mm. it. It well, it can make you really neurotic, right? Which for me is not my general operating like mode i'm very like loose on stage yeah so. right if it's a show that it's like i'm less stressed about i'll probably smoke mm-hmm. but on the dope show like i have to do a lot of shit you know yeah. i gotta manage it and then i gotta do all the sales afterwards yeah and then i gotta pay everybody so i'm like i wear that shirt everywhere by the way i wore it on the last episode hey. with my dope show t-shirt nice i love that shirt but yeah, I just got to keep my merch. I'm sorry. I, that's no, become, you're it's quickly become my favorite shirt. Yeah. All I love it. No, man. <laughs> I, uh, I try and get nice shirts so people wear them. <laughs> it's awesome. It's like a baseball tee. Get a Dope Show t-shirt if you don't have one please, already. Please. We're going to talk about the Dope great. Show, guys. I just got more weed questions. We're literally in the <laughs> middle of talking about the Dope Show. I know. You're like, let me get to it. We're, we're getting we're organically. Right. 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 Let's go back. Look, this is extremely deliberate. It has I'm going to turn this conversation around right now. <laughs> I hate you guys this. didn't see that bullet point. We drove right past it. <laughs> so god damn it. Were your influences weed related? Oh my god. Sorry, did we miss it? Were your influences? <laughs> I did have some influential weed people in my I don't life. even know if that was the bullet point we missed, but <laughs> God I hate you. So much. <laughs> I know. <laughs> That's my philosophy on life is with everybody. I I like you. I don't care if you like me. <laughs> Give me a little. <laughs> God damn it. So are you like itching though when you get off stage? Like Yeah. Get high? I smoke as soon as I get out of the club. <laughs> like as soon as I leave, I try and smoke. I, I, do, I do too. I literally like walking <laughs> towards my car, getting my like yeah pen out. And usually there's people like waiting to smoke with me. Yeah, a lot of people like you know, it's like one of the biggest benefits of my job. Um, I used to always joke about how uh, like ever since I started this show, like people will always hand me free weed and um, you know want to smoke with me. And I'm like, man, I should have started the money show. <laughs> That'd have been great, or the or the the pussy show or something. I don't know. <laughs> Somebody, but, uh, uh, somebody handed me weed at both the dope shows I did for you. Right? Yeah. It's a great right. thing. Somebody, hey, man, this is really good. I'm like, okay, thank you. That's I always say it's like stranger. bringing sand to the beach, but I mean, I'll take it. <laughs> Whatever. That's fucking, yeah, that is cool. I've seen people hand off joints so to comics before. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That happens a lot. It's kind of dope. But yeah, yeah. Or like a little bag of crack and you're like. <laughs> yeah. Woo! Have you now, ever got anything super weird? Um, One time. There was this, there was this uh, girl that I did, uh, I did a commercial before I moved to LA in Texas, and uh, <laughs> this girl was in, she was in, she was like an extra in the commercial, and uh, like we flirted a little bit. Nothing ever had happened, but she would come to my shows every time I came back to Houston, and so like it got to be this like it was strange because she would bring like baked goods, like one time she brought cupcakes. And one time she brought like a card with like a oh, really she was, like, sweet letter to wipe in it. You. <laughs> yeah, but here's the thing: she was married. She's trying to and sister so, wife you. <laughs> <laughs> but it, you, you're like you're in the green room, and she's in the doorway giving you baked goods, and you know, like she looked great. I mean, and her husband's like three feet behind her, just leering at me. Just like I'm like, 
This I is help, great. Is he like, I helped or is he like, <laughs> fucking. <laughs> <laughs> I helped. My recipe. Nope. I, uh, I arranged them. <laughs> That's my garnish up there. Just or is he just to, like, fucking just don't want touch you to her. think don't about my recipe while you fuck my wife. <laughs> <laughs> so nothing happened like with it, though? No, I didn't. Like, no, I never did anything with her. Did you just like eat the cupcakes staring they, at the husband? Yeah, me and all the comics and really enjoyed the cupcakes, though. Wow. That was a good night. But that's fucking weird though oh and one time that's... one time um this wasn't really so much weird as it was sweet but um one time my because I, I worked with this guy kevin and uh his mom was like like i don't know we i i, I made friends with his mom and like i was always it was when that movie uh wedding crashers was out and every time he's on the phone with her i'd scream at her me love mom fucking me love and then the first time i came back to houston she brought me a meatloaf so I just had a meatloaf in the club. Nice. And uh, after the show, like me and some of the staff had some meatloaf. <laughs> it was really good. I mean, <laughs> but I was like, I'm not taking this back to my hotel. That's I fucking can't. weird. Yeah. I'm just, gonna fucking, <laughs> just leave it in the bag. I knew I was going to I was gonna go get high and just eat a whole meatloaf. That's, fucking, yeah, that's too much really meatloaf. I feel like trash tomorrow. Uh, It'd be that, better than a lot of things you could eat all night. Though. That's true. That's mm. true. <laughs> What are some examples, though? Uh, I mean, <laughs> we, we've we been doing dope shows in uh, Bend, Oregon, and the show ends at 10, and the town shuts down at 9.30. Oh, so, there's nothing. But the only thing that's open is Winco. So What's Winco? It's like a cheap grocery store. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's somewhere so between, like, a fucking Sam's Club and, like, a Safeway. Oh. It's like, yeah. But then you're in a hotel. Yeah, and you don't you with like, like bags of up. candy and like <laughs> microwavable shit. <laughs> what's like, what's your go to like shit for when you're you're Winco, after? It's chocolate covered cinnamon bears. If I can, the oh the like the candy. The, oh wait, I was I thought you were talking about the Teddy Grahams. No, the cinnamon bear gummies, like a. Like a hot tamale gummy. Oh. <laughs> but it's bear shaped without the harder shell. <laughs> and it's covered in chocolate. Is it like a so gummy or is it like hot tamale consistency inside? It's like a gummy. It's a gummy. It's just a That's giant so gummy true. bear, but cinnamon. Nice. Yeah, covered in huh. chocolate. Hot like bags of them or what? Like how hard well, you do you buy go? them by weight? So like I'll get like I'll get a half a pound. <laughs> <laughs> God damn. <laughs> Okay, let's talk about next bullet point. The Every, next bullet. Everybody <laughs> listen right. to my bullets. Everyone pay attention. <laughs> so, dope show. What was the inspiration behind? Like, what is the show? What was the inspiration? Um, behind so, it? the dope show is a stand up comedy show where comedians perform and then they go get really high and they attempt to perform again. Never any guarantees in the second <laughs> set. Uh, I'm the host of the show. I uh, am the. Uh, the drug shaman, if you will, <laughs> who carries the whole, the show. Um, I've been doing it for like six years and um, I am not the first one to ever do it. I'm not the inventor of smoking weed before comedy, but um, I love the show and uh, I wanted to do my own because I was always asked to be on those weed shows. And I was like, why don't I just do this myself and try and make extra cash doing it? Mm -hmm. um, so I started it. And it's been going good ever since. Um, yeah. Where did you do the first show? The first one was at the Comedy Underground in Seattle. They offered me a weekend to headline. And I said I would rather um, do a, a couple headlines and then have a, a show at the end. That's a themed comedy show. Mm -hmm. um, just because I knew of the arrangements. And I'm like, I bet I could make more money if I did it that way. And um the first one, we had so many people come out that the owner of the comedy club uh, wanted to do it weekly. Oh, uh, shit. And I was like, that's way too much. <laughs> like, we're going to burn out. So we did uh, two a month for, like, a couple years there. And how did it go? Um, each one was great. Like, I think the lowest one we'd ever get, we did, the lowest audience was about 75 uh, when we first started. Um and at the Comedy Underground, that was a really good crowd. 75 yeah. people there is really good, especially for like a Wednesday, Tuesday. Oh, yeah. Like nice. we were only doing them on Wednesdays and Tuesdays at the beginning. What? Um, so what year was this, though? Um, That was like 20, 
15 or 16, I want to say. Well, I think it was January 2016. Yeah. I announced the show 2015. And was the format always the same or have you tweaked it? Um, it's always been the same. Uh, it's like the difference between my format and other people's formats is that it was an actual comedy show with a opener feature headliner. And then I would do like 10 minutes before and after that's that chunk. And then the second half was just like a, a quick couple minutes from each guy, super high. Um, with that kind of in almost the same order where it would be like, um, or it's in the same order as the first lineup, but then the headliner got more time type of thing. Um, but then I changed the format since then because um, it used to be like you would do 10 to 15 minutes high and like, you know, 10 to 15 minutes sober if you're, if you're headlining the show. But now it's like just do half an hour sober and do five minutes high because uh, the longer we've do it, doing it, the more we're having more people on it lower the tolerance level for like, you know, the general <laughs> sense. Cause now it's like, it's a bigger show so we can have bigger people and people don't smoke weed that are on it. So a lot of, it's asking a lot from a lot of them. So we try and shorten it down. So it's not a complete like, you know, heart attack for these guys. So I guess I'm a little, and confused. it makes the show go faster. Uh, Cause so the reason, the big reason I remember it was Jay Hollingsworth. You guys know big Irish Jay. I know of him. Um, so he was like, he was headlining the show one time and uh, this was when I first started, man, I was like a real try hard and I had like gift bags for every comic on the show, like a personalized gift bag with like treats and candies and chips. And it had chapstick eye drops and like, uh, like a, uh, something else in there. That's amazing. Yeah. Like a lighter and so a joint sweet. and all this type of stuff. It was like a nice little care package. And, um, um, we started doing the show in nice clubs and they, they had that kind of set for me. So I didn't really have to do it anymore. <laughs> but beginning, I was like, oh, I'll give you guys something nice. <laughs> like, welcome to the underground. Uh, um, anyways, uh, just uh, push that rat aside and here you go. Um, so uh, Jay was stoned and everybody was going through their sets because he was headlining. So everybody was like out there watching and performing. He was left alone in the green room to his own devices. And he just kind of went through everybody's gift bag and took all of their candy, put it in his. And then he put like chapstick and lotions and like whatever's in the other ones, like the non edible products he put in everybody else's bags and then just sat there and ate everybody's. And then he got on stage and he tried to tell that story about what just happened, but he couldn't fucking spit anything out. He was so goddamn obliterated that it was just 15 minutes of him starting the story <laughs> and then laughing and then like going, wait, wait, where am I again? And then he'd be like, so, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, in the green room. And he like started the same fucking story. It just got to the point where we're like, all right, let's just clap him off stage. <laughs> you know, let's just clap him off. Well, that's funny for like, a couple minutes exactly but then eventually it's like okay all right we need him to straighten up and it, he is not he's not and it's like all right we got that this uh this is not um a performance enhancer so uh we see the con we see the differences now let's get him out of here so. okay so you did uh host feature headliner before then like the like, i guess what is it now i'm, I'm a little confused. so now the 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 sets are just five minutes instead of 15 afterwards yeah but it's still a normal show before still a normal show beforehand okay and i just host the whole thing yeah gotcha okay and what i mean you you did it recently it you love the the merch yeah. you really enjoy the merch I you didn't wear show. it today which is crazy <laughs> for this episode <laughs> Wait, is it of all the episodes you could have worn is that is that the uh, what? <laughs> mel brooks Oh, I don't know. Star Wars. Is that like a, it's like a Boston thing. Because they say star instead of star. star. But then there's like this weird elven language underneath it. It's probably like German. Or it's not a Boston something. thing. Oh, ask him. Like. He lived in Herman. Is this German? Is this Herman? <laughs> oh, God. I, I like this to say things with the correct accent. <laughs> I know you lived in Harmony. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we say Deutschland now. <laughs> Deutschland. <laughs> Deutschland. Thank you for <laughs> respecting my culture. <laughs> no, it was great. Dope show is amazing. The crowd comes just fucking ready to laugh. They, I, I told you, I remember I talked to you on the way back from Spokane, I think, and I was like, that's one of the best crowds I've ever seen in Seattle. Like, like since like since I had moved here, I was like, that's awesome. Like, 
Dude, I didn't expect Spokane to be such rad audiences. Uh, I didn't expect to have so much fun performing high. Because when everybody mm. knows you're high, then you're not like, I have to I have to keep it straight and do my set. Like, you know, but like they all know I'm high. So I'm like, fuck it, guys. Let's just let's They're play. expecting it. Yeah. yeah. They're always five five there. minutes wasn't enough for me. I was like, let's keep going. I was <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the audience, I mean, they're pumped. They're behind it. They're there to see the train wreck. They're there to see yeah. the attempt and they realize that it is an attempt, which is what comedy is, you know. Like I think that's one of my favorite Dave Chappelle's quotes is that you're there to see the attempt yeah <laughs> like, you get paid for the attempt yeah exactly you get paid for the attempt yeah not the actual guarantee i love that but the audience there they're there for the attempt at it so they know that it might not go well so they're always very supportive yeah um is it usually that portion of the show that drives like the funniest part like the fuck ups uh i mean it can be it's all over the board like some people are really good i mean some people are really funny in the beginning and like you know uh the high set is just whatever um like it's just another set for some people yeah <laughs> some people have like pretty bad panic attacks and it is really funny like i don't know why it's so funny but it's just everybody sees you and they know you're uncomfortable and it just brings joy <laughs> you know just like <laughs> it's true god i'm so glad i'm not that guy right now <laughs> you know like look at him struggle right now um, for you what what how does it usually affect your like my performance yeah uh so i like I try not to smoke weed on the dope show. Um, I usually wait until afterwards so I can smoke with the people. Um, uh, but there was one time we had a uh, dope magazine came to the show one time and they were doing like, they wanted uh, pictures of everybody and they, they were especially focused on me because you know, it's obviously my show. And um, they had me like on the, uh, on the can bus because we used to have a big party bus that would go to all the shows. And um, now it's illegal. So we can't do it anymore. But, there would be this cannabis bus that would park outside and we, we did a photo shoot on top of it inside of it. Sorry, before the show. And he kept asking me to like hit a joint and he's like, now, but like big clouds, Tyler, big clouds, <laughs> just being like a fucking photographer. And I'm just like, all right, big clouds, you know? And, uh, I get fucking ripped, <laughs> like ripped. And then we go in there to start the show. And I'm like, it's a big show because I knew that that magazine was coming. So like I had really like I had sold out fucking laughs and we had a ton of people there and I just start the show and I'm like, I go, all right, let's go put your hands together for Tyler. So I get to the stage and it was like, boom. <laughs> like, as soon as I got on stage, I'm like, oh, fuck. <laughs> like, ah, damn it. And I, I try to explain what just happened and I'm like, you're going to get like a reverse dope show from me. <laughs> like It's going to start shaky. I'll be fine by the end. Hey, let's just dive right into it. Let's just dive right into it. Come on, put your hands together and let's get the first guy up here. Uh, but yeah, yeah, it was a nightmare for me to be <laughs> performing that oh, high. Man. God damn. I always feel bad for everybody, man. Like, I don't like that this is how we sell tickets now. <laughs> but this is how we do it. And so I loved it. I, was, I don't know. It was like a carnival ride. <laughs> well, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Yeah, it was wonderful. Some people can appreciate it. Some yeah, people just can't, was... you know. How is your show different than other weed shows? Um, well, there's another major weed show in town. And the big difference between mine and that one is that. Uh, it so good, by the way. Banana. <laughs> Um, the big difference between mine and that show is one, my show happens at, you know, the biggest clubs in town. So I use bigger X and I, uh, don't make myself the focus of the show. Like there's not a big half hour of me just trying to kill time in the middle. Mm -hmm. Uh, like I'm not just struggling with random kooky ideas for people. It's not like a, a game show where we're doing dumb shit in the middle. It's like an actual comedy show. Uh, so I feel like you're you're saying something. Oh, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> do people like, oh. do, do people often think it's like a game show? Some when they show no, up. They know it's a comedy show, and like another big thing is the comedians when they leave my show, they know they're going to get paid, which is you know a big thing too. Yeah, uh, that's more of like a inside baseball, <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah. I I know there's been some kind of like there's been some riffs around these shows. I mean, occasionally in comedy riffs, just some issues, you know, mm. not like the happy riffs that you like, the sad riffs that make everyone sad. What riffs? <laughs> what? But moving along. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> there, there have been like 
there's some controversy around uh, weed shows in this area, like oh. over who started them first. And oh, there is. Mm. Well, is that a thing? Do you get you can't, I know you the can't big, shit There's over the that? two big shows. There's mine and there's the Gateway. Uh, Gateway started, I think, nine months before I started mine. Mm-hmm. Um, you want to know who headlined the first one? Yours? No, the Gateway show. Who had the, the first Gateway show? Sure. That was me. Me. I headlined almost all of them. Really? <laughs> For the first, like, six months, I was like, that act. And then I realized that this fucking idiot is just making money off of us and not paying us. So I just cut him out. Um, but he wasn't the first one to do it. The first one that did it in this area was Norwest, the owner of the Tacoma Comedy Club, and it was called The Brownie Show. And that one was the first one in this area, yeah, at least in the last decade. But before that, there's a ton more. There's like the fucking the Green Show in the Bay Area. There's fucking um some other show in uh, Wisconsin. I can't remember the name of it. There's a ton of these shows. They're like they're common shows. Yeah. Um, the only reason why I think you haven't heard of those other shows is because the people that have started them um, either didn't know or have the capability of getting them to the next level. Okay. Thanks for asking about that, by the way. <laughs> you just made it so weird for all of us. Why? That's not Sorry. weird. No, I want to know, I want to know the history, but, but you, I'm glad that you're, that you have the opinion of like, this is not like a fucking like any, any like, it's it's always been a weird someone, topic. Yeah, the idea of someone being like, "We well, fucking stole my idea." I know, to, like, really, dude. It's like I can't do comedy because somebody else is doing comedy. Like, neither one of us are the inventors of smoking weed and doing comedy. Yeah, but there's a big reason why my show is in all the comedy clubs and that show isn't, and that's because that person that runs the other one is just unworkable with. Like, you can't work with him. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll tell you a funny story. So Tacoma Comedy Club owns by the same people that own Spokane Comedy Club. And when I started the dope show, um, I was scheduled to headline the Gateway Show 420 uh, at Tacoma Comedy Club. And then after I started the show, you know, everybody was upset. So they yanked me off. And uh, then the owner of the club called me and he said, how come you got yanked off this show? And I was like, because I started my own. And he's like, oh, you wanted more for yourself? (laughs) And I was like, yeah. And he's like, well, that sounds shitty. So he canceled that show. And then, uh, so now neither one of us were in that club. Uh, I was still in that club because I I work there and I'm a regular there. Yeah. But my show wasn't in that club. And then um, months after that, uh, owner called me back up. Uh, I think it was a group text, me and the owner of the other show. Uh, And he's like, hey, I like you both. Um, let's do this. Tyler gets Tacoma and you get Spokane. We'll do them the same day and we'll just see what happens. Same day every month. Mm-hmm. So first month, do them the same day. We both bring out, I think like 165 people. Um, next month, same day, uh, his show's canceled. My show goes on. And I'm like, I have no idea why. Uh, everybody was buzzing. Like what happened? What happened? And what had happened was the producer of the other marijuana show stayed at the condo of the owner of the comedy clubs, uh, his condo, and um, his dogs were there. And instead of being a great, loving guest and taking care of the animals of the owner, he just let the door open to the house and then the animals all ran away. And one of them ended up running so far and was so terrified and nobody chased after it or got like tried to get it back into the house that it ended up dying of heat exhaustion. Um, So one of us got labeled a dog killer (laughs) and got both comedy clubs. And then the other one, you know, ended up having to move to a different state so he could keep working. Is kind of the big thing. I don't think I anybody really saved that for about. story time. That was a story time story. It's wild because that's like why I'm in Seattle. I killed a couple of dogs. <laughs> really? <laughs> and I, no, you no, fucking hate those dogs. <laughs> can't be associated with you. You just got to cut John out of this episode. <laughs> <laughs> These fucking dogs suck, though, bro. I'm telling you. <laughs> you know when a dog's like just asking for it? It's weird. <laughs> it's weird because I. I'm just going to ignore you for a second. Thank you. Um, (laughs) I don't know that other person. So I, I feel like very like hesitant to say 
anything right or wrong about them. And I like, I'm not going to have you come on and tell your side of it and not like be open ears to the other side of it. Sure. And I, I know that person and I have some mutual friends, so I'm going to respect that. That's one side of the story. Sure. And there's, I'm sure, you know, well, I don't well, know why I'm what do you think? Both of our of stories it. have a dead dog. And <laughs> <laughs> so I'll just tell you that right now. <laughs> yeah. Whether or not he tried more to make sure that dog didn't die in his story is the only deciding. I think the only difference between the two of them. Yeah. Yeah. But, but in I, my opinion, I mean, if you're chasing a dog, you don't take a selfie and post it on Instagram saying, oh, man, fucking my friend's dog just got away. God <laughs> you don't damn. take time to update your fucking Instagram. Like yeah. a piece of shit. Anyways. Valid point. <laughs> it's <laughs> like you're fucking in the arms of an angel. <laughs> so before you got into those, into doing these shows, were you working at dispensaries and shit? Mm-hmm. And before that, what were yeah, you? I mean, I was working in dispensaries since 2009. Yeah. Yeah. And then prior to, the, like, when did it get legal here? 2016. Oh, I thought it was like 2012. 2012 is when it was like decriminalized um, and legal for adult use, like not even legalized, but uh, medical marijuana was around 2009 and then stores started opening right around there as well. Like mm -hmm. I think around 11 or 12 is when like actual medical dispensaries were opening up. Yeah. Cause when I moved here in 2012, it was like, they started really proliferating. Like it was right. just like it was everywhere. every strip mall, whatever they made it really easy to get medical licenses mm -hmm. and they made it, made it really easy to just get started in that business. Um, but and now, how were you like aligned with that? Like, were you, cause you had been kind of, yeah, like I was, uh, you know, like 26 or something and fresh from college. And I was like, let's fucking, let's do this. Like all I have to do is go to my doctor say my tummy hurts and I get a car that says I can buy weed and then I can work in the store and I can make money. That's fucking not being taxed. Like, yeah, let's do that. <laughs> was it wide open too? like where the regulation wise? Was it, how has it changed? Yeah, it, it was wide open. And that's a big reason why a lot of it got kept getting pushed to be more regulated. One, it was mostly for the taxes. Like everybody wanted the taxes. Um, but as long as we had it the way it was going, there was like, there's no fucking way you're going to tax it because it was cash. And it's like, how are you going to, like, you don't even know how much I'm growing. Yeah. <laughs> like there's, there's nothing like nobody knew anything. Um, it was like, pay, you pay taxes for how much money you wanted to show you made, you know, was how it was. Like I only made this amount of money cause I'm trying to buy this thing. And that's, you know, Anyways, that might be too much information, <laughs> but, but that's what, that was what the game was at that time. That's how it was back then. Yeah. And legalization like, has like changed that a lot, but like, were you, were, was it all like technically like above the board or were you doing some stuff that, I mean, it was technically above the board. Uh, everything that I was doing, I was doing it legally cause I had my license and, um, so everything was fine. I was. I was obeying the law <laughs> um, perfectly until 2016 when they legalized it. Mm -hmm. They legalized it in 2015, and then the actual laws took place in 2016. Mm -hmm. So it got legalized November 2015, and then January, like something, is when it, everything took place. Uh, so there was three months of uh, like really just fucking do whatever you want. <laughs> so... Uh, I, I'm an opportunist <laughs> and I saw a moment and I took an, uh, I took a chance and, um, uh, me and a couple people, we ended up just putting ads in the paper and just saying that we opened up a store and we're selling weeds. So, uh, it was delivery and, uh, Wait, um, but pause though. Cause this is the start of our story time segment. I know. I, I, think. I figured this is how you're bleeding into it. <laughs> Heard that before? Is that? That's beautiful. <laughs> is, 
This Were you called... not expecting that? No. <laughs> this show's awesome. called Fatum. Fatum and Friends. Like yeah. Fat Adam. Yeah, my my brother nicknamed me that as a kid. I was like, I, it was, did but... your your childhood bully name? Yes, show? exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. I wonder if that guy I bullied ever got over the fact I bullied him. <laughs> <laughs> nope. God damn. He got fat though, so it's worked oh. out okay. I'm gonna crack a window, by the way. Hold on. Do you need a lighter? Yeah, an ashtray. Okay. I was gonna finish that, but it didn't. You guys just can What's you that? can you take care of this while I'm up? Yeah, I got it. I'll steer. <laughs> so we're bleeding into this story about the time that. Uh, I got into trouble with weed. <laughs> <laughs> Only once? Only once. And, yeah, the fucking, Jesus, how many times? 23 years that I've been smoking weed. Yeah. I've never been once. caught with it. Oh, really? Boy. Yeah. Uh, no, and I grew up I, smo- I grew up smoking in uh, uh, Texas. Perfect. Oh, yeah, it's much more intense in Texas. Yeah, I mean, like, you buy weed and then put it in your uh, gas cap. Like you'd open up your gas door and put it in there, and like that's so funny. In, ca- in case you're like, but oh yeah, you know, so I that's so your car that. doesn't smell on the inside. I forgot about that. Just on the outside where the cop yeah, is. Yeah, you put tea bags <laughs> inside with it. Yeah, they just open it like this whole fucking. That's tea. <laughs> that's some of that most tea. most people would just be like, well, put, it under, put it under the seat and drive. Uh, <laughs> but you, I got, I was really nervous the first few times I bought it in Texas. I think this is the first time anybody smoked pot on the pot. So, like, big clouds. Big clouds. (laughs) We want to see that sweet fucking cotton, Tyler. Mm. (laughs) Cotton dye. Okay. I just took all the momentum out of your story. We played the music, and then I fucking got up. Go for it. Mm. So, 2015, uh, I started working with this guy I had met. Um, cause I, uh, like I was selling pot back then. Like I was a pot dealer, but a pot dealer meant like, you know, I was making like a few extra hundred bucks a month selling pot. Mm-hmm. And then, um, I had floor seats to, uh, this fucking key arena. And I sat next to some guy for the rat city roller girls. Nothing any big. Oh, I was <laughs> you, like, what did you, but so I used to sit on, the, I had season floor tickets. Uh, and I sat there and I sat next to this guy and we were chatting and he was like, you sell weed? And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, why don't you sell weed for me? And I'm like, I don't know what that means. And he's like, ah, I got like a network. We should uh, get together. And I'm like, all right. So all those ambiguous words. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I have no idea what's going on, but <laughs> like it could be really good or really bad. Mm-hmm. Cause at this point in my life, I had worked for a ton of dispensaries and it was, um, never fun. It was always like, you know, we'll pay you in cash or or weed. <laughs> you know, like whatever you think's appropriate. Yeah. Um and there were a lot of like trimming jobs then too, right? Yeah. Like, and I would always take the weed option, which sucked because I knew that they would pay me the amount like that they thought that, that was the equivalent to. And then I would obviously sell it for like twice. So it's like I would double whatever wage I worked, but then I'm doubling the time that I spent trying to get that fucking money. So it really, it's whatever. Yeah. Um, but, uh, I met this guy and he like was, this was like rapture marijuana got legalized. There was this thing like the wild, wild west, uh, time of that when everything was legalized, but nothing was legalized yet. So licenses hadn't been sent out. And essentially Washington state was like, yo, whatever happens the next couple months, like we're just going to turn a blind eye to, and we're like, all right. So, um, when I got to this guy, he had been taking out ads and putting them in the paper and just, uh, we were just selling weed to fucking anybody who called this number. And it was like, like right next to like the prostitute ads in the stranger was yeah. like, Hey, call Tyler for weed. <laughs> you know? And uh, I'm just like, Hey, <laughs> was it actually you? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, okay. We weren't that bold. We weren't that bold. Uh, but so, uh, like, yeah, at that time I was just selling weed and it's like a really good story, by the, the way, <laughs> the way we would do it was we'd have like a call center. You would call that call number, that 
dispatch would call me and I'd drive over to your house. And I just was mobile at the time. And I had like a, a briefcase of weed with me. Were you in the Chrysler 300 too? I was in a smart car. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. I was what were you wearing? Weird. Like what, did like you what have... I wear right now. Okay. Like uh, just normal clothes, but I had a smart car. Um, I was doing it first in a smart car because uh, I could just get anywhere faster. And I was the Seattle guy. Um, like the other drivers were like North Seattle, South Seattle, West Seattle. And I was, I was Capitol Hill downtown and, uh, Ballard and Fremont area. So okay. like core, you would have been my guy. I would have been yours. If I lived around. Here um, time. so oh, all about you right now. This is his story. So. Are you sure. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> we were selling a lot of weed back then. <laughs> like at the time I had, uh, I had about like 3,400 contacts in my phone nice. and this is a phone that was only used for that <laughs> so that, but your phone it was a burner like uh, it was yeah. it wasn't even a burner it was an actual it was a full line dedicated just to that job and there was about 3400 contacts in there so i was selling weed from when i woke up to when i went to bed every day for months um and we were making a ton of money doing that like uh uh i would make what i would make uh, it was impressive. It was impressive. It was impressive. We'll just leave it at that. Um, Enough for you to keep doing it. Yeah. And not worry about anything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we just kept doing it. And then, um, then it became actually legalized and businesses were opening and um, actual companies who had invested millions and millions of dollars to open up their doors were upset about all of these black market areas. So they started paying police officers to do sting operations. And um, it's kind of crazy, like big marijuana ended up hiring local police officers to put sting operations to arrest like small marijuana. <laughs> so one day I was making a delivery and I was doing it at the Nexus Hotel in Northgate, uh, two blocks from where I live. Yeah. And um, I sold weed to this guy and uh, as soon as like the whole situation was weird because like he he was using an Australian accent, but it sounded like so fake. <laughs> and I was just like, <laughs> I don't know, maybe he has like a brain injury, <laughs> like it's medical weed. So maybe he's a fucking this guy. Has- I'm going undercover. I'm going to fucking take a piss on this whole thing. <laughs> An undercover guy used a fake Australian accent the whole time. I was like, why is he doing this? I think he just has a brain injury. So I just didn't think of anything of it. And I sold him some weed. As soon as I sold him the weed and as soon as I turned around to get out of the hotel, like the door busted open and like 13 fucking SWAT just busted in there and surrounded me and like, you know, held my hands up and like kept my hands away from me. And I was just like, I'm just like fucking being like held up by all these fucking people. And um, that's what they're doing with their time, though. It's like it's for third. I don't know. So. They they had arrested me on a good day. It was a Monday, and Mondays is usually when I picked up all my products. So I had about like five pounds of weed in my car, um, and I had like a. It was eleven o'clock in the afternoon, so I had about three grand in my pocket. Uh, <laughs> so, um, eleven o'clock in the morning, I guess. Um, so I got arrested, and I went to like. Uh, the thing they when you get arrested there, they just send you to the closest like police station, which was right across the street. So now it was like kitty corner to where I live to right across the street from where I live. Cause I lived across the street from the police station and the whole time. I'm oh, like, God. I live right there. We, you can just drop me off, but no, took me in there and I was in handcuffs, uh, at like, uh, the Northgate, uh, police station for eight hours, just fucking sitting there miserable. So mad. Um, and then they transported me to King County um where i stayed for another 20 hours and then um i finally got released the next day and uh that was like one of the most stressful nights of my life i would say like i was definitely like oh fuck what's gonna happen and talking to anybody inside prison is like a dumb idea because these guys they're everybody there thinks they're a lawyer they're like so what are you here for (laughs) and uh the stories like everybody's like oh i'm here for this and um, I told somebody, I'm like, yeah, I got arrested. And like, for what? I'm like, weed. And they're like, ah, you'll be out of here tomorrow. And I'm like, <laughs> like, how much weed do you have? I'm like, five pounds. And like, oh, 
uh, well, was it just weed? And I'm like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm like, no. Nah. I don't know if I can take your case, kid. Uh, yeah, and they're like, oh, man, you might be in here for a while. <laughs> and I'm like, fuck. Um, but I was less stressed. I was, like, up and down because people had, like, so many different opinions about it. Um, one of the guys I got released with, because uh, they released – they release you in groups, you know, it's not just one at a time. It's like they call a bunch of names and then you go down to this one floor and on that floor you change from your jail clothes back into your regular clothes. And then you go down to another floor where you get handed all your personal products and then you get down to another floor and you like are actually exiting the building. Um, and when I was exiting with like a group of guys, one of the guys that I got released with said that it was his eighth arrest that year or like in the last six months or whatever and he had seven ounces of heroin on him. And I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, and you're getting, all right, cool. Right. So it's just whatever. Um, the thing that really sucked about all of that was there's this thing called cease and forfeiture laws, which is when a police officer arrests you for a crime, anything that you're using for that crime is seized and you forfeit. <laughs> and uh, The problem with that was I drove there in my car. So they took my car and uh, they put it, in like um, wherever they put cars that, that drug dealers have. And they fucking, um, uh, so for the next year, I was going in and out of court trying to figure out how long I was going to go to jail for or if I was going to do anything or whatever. Because um, they arrested me on a Bliska charge, which was trafficking narcotics. And that is uh, five to 15 years. And um, obviously I didn't go to jail. So as I'm here and I, I probably would have been released actually last year if I uh, had gone. Uh, but um, they, uh, the Bliska charge didn't stick because that whole sting operation, which was purchased by local marijuana companies, wasn't authorized by the, the uh, district attorney. So the guy that is the city's lawyer that's like, hey, if you do this, I will make sure the city punishes these people did not agree on this operations was that pete i can't remember Holmes or whatever his name was from um the da at that time there was like a bunch of controversy about the da at the maybe time. i don't know um it, it was basically like all these weed charges are getting dropped basically yeah yeah so anybody that had a weed charge like they just essentially dropped it um need something which is because nope. marijuana got legalized and they were trying to put people away for you know crime laws that were written again on the war on drugs that are like this is ridiculous yeah so essentially if anybody opens up a pot shop they're gonna go to jail for like 20 years uh so they just fucking um after a year in court uh they ended up dropping the charge all the way down to operating without a business license and i got a like a thousand dollar ticket and then i had um they said they would only give me my car back if i paid for like i think two thousand dollars in storage fees um so it just bottomed out to about three thousand dollars in fines instead of how much but you prison. lost five pounds of product yeah that was, was that lot. on you that was on me <laughs> that was on me and what like at the time what's that wasn't it like four grand four thousand for a, a pound? pound yeah so. yeah why do i know that I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's a good good guess you had. Yeah, there. very good guess. No, you, it was I feel like you guys know so much more about drugs and crime than me. <laughs> and I've the and I feel like I've spent more time in jail. Than I got my tea bags <laughs> and my gas tank. Yeah. I never got in trouble for drugs. I, I was always in trouble for drinking. Mm. Well, I got I got a drunk driving uh, arrest in 2009. I had just won the uh Houston's Funniest Person Contest. Oh, that and high must have ended yeah, quick. <laughs> I got it. Yeah, I was feeling great. But I had a bunch of money in my pocket, luckily. Uh, Dang. Anyway, I, I spent that weekend in jail, and then I violated the probation that they put me on, and they put me in jail for 30 days. And then I spent a weekend in jail when I was 19 for shoplifting. But I feel like I spent 30 days in jail... And I'm so bad at crime. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm so like you didn't really do anything that warranted that. How was King <laughs> County, by the way? Because I like I went to jail in Indiana, and that sucked. But like, I imagine King County is fucking rough, just um, with like as much riffraff. It was pretty gross. Like, 
the place wasn't that bad, but the people in there was really gross because they were arresting a lot of like uh, people that were obviously causing ruckuses at both stations. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So there's a lot of people, people that were coming off of drugs that were in the house with me. Like I'm like, I was like in great shape. I'm like fucking well, like I wasn't well dressed. Well, you were running up people's fucking stairs all the time delivering. Like you're a glorified pizza guy. Exactly. So I'm just like, I was fucking, I'm so pissed. I'm just there. Like I was sober too. I hadn't eaten, which really sucked. But, um, I took like an Adderall that morning, which was like great. Cause, uh, they arrested me at 11. I started my day at like eight. So, uh, if they, if I didn't take that Adderall at like 10 30, I think was when I was like, I'm just gonna take an Adderall instead of eating lunch. And, um, uh, but they didn't feed me until the next day. At, oh like, shit. Uh, the Adderall seven saved or whatever. you. So the Adderall saved me. Like I was like, thank God I had that Adderall. Otherwise I would have been so fucking hungry right now. <laughs> when you were like delivering, were you just smoking the whole day? Like while you were mm, driving? No, I was too paranoid. Like I was trying to keep, I look like an Uber. Like, my car was clean like an Uber. Mm-hmm. Everything looked like Uber. I even had an Uber sticker. Okay. And did you ever have any like weird delivery moment? Like people, yeah, bro. <laughs> like anything <laughs> yeah. cool or worth telling? I mean, <clears throat> I had a guy <clears throat> pull a knife out on me. <clears throat> that Whoa. was kind of a nightmare. What'd you do? <clears throat> I told him there's a cop behind us. I was like, there's a cop behind us. Cause he had pulled the knife out and I was like, yo, there's a cop. Like, uh, almost like, like I wasn't telling him put the knife away. I was like, put the weed away because there's a cop right behind us. And he was like, he got real paranoid and he just started like, and I'm like, just go, just go, just go. And he just got out of my car. You like left. tricked him out of I it. Tricked him, yeah. That would that like was it just instinct or had you thought about what you would do? Uh, that was just that just was my comedic improv right there. <laughs> 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 that was just a, Did you an carry any skill. sort of uh, protection like mace? No, I didn't. Gunning. Like. Um, I was very, cause like most of the people I sold to were like just mom, like just people, they were just normal people. And like, we would go to their home addresses. So I, I wasn't trying to bring a weapon into people's yeah. ad, like homes and stuff like that. Um, and like a lot of people that I sold to were mostly medical patients that just didn't have the ability to go to places. Cause so, it had been shut down in limbo or, um, or. They were the, still the going. The medical shops were shut down, but they weren't allowed to do deliveries. Like, you've never been allowed to do deliveries. Yeah. Um. So, well, dude, just you, having you, moved wait, you here. Can, you can do deliveries in California. Yeah, but not in Washington. Oh. Mm-hmm. Having not lived here, like, I moved here in 2012 from Vegas, but I had lived in the Midwest. Like, the whole, like weed situation here is so dramatically different than anywhere else in the country. I mean, you talk about it in your act yeah. with like Texas just being so different, like seeing weed delivery cars and shit. Like I, I I've seen cars in the city. I don't know if it was legal or not, but it was just this very gray area up until like the legalization thing. Mm-hmm. And it's just, there's nothing like it in States that where this isn't going on. I mean, I I got here. I was like, can you, so you can smoke weed if you have a card or you, you can fucking get it. And now it's legal. I guess it, it makes more sense, but there was a period of time where it was like totally unclear. Yeah. Mm. Like when I first moved to California in 2012 for like the first thing I learned was like how to get, you know, the weed card. Yeah. <laughs> like, and I didn't just do the tummy ache. I just checked all the boxes. That's so I'm like, I'm a fucking mess doc. Because like, <laughs> I thought, like, I was like, they got to make sure they give me this card. Like, I'm, yeah, I'm depressed. I'm manic. I'm this. Like, yeah. My In Washington, tummy hurts. Yeah. You can't do Body mental pains. illnesses in Washington, so it's got to be physical. Oh, really? Yeah, I, huh. I just checked every box. I was like, I need it for everything, sir. Like, oh, you have AIDS? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Probably. It's in there. <laughs> Probably didn't even look at the car. I'm not going to pay for that test. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we got to wrap up here. Appreciate you coming on, but what... Uh, uh, Do you want to hear what happened? <laughs> with that whole oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Fuck. I, uh, so a year later, I guess, yeah, I told you I just got a fine, but my car had been in jail the entire time. I finally got that. I guess I did tell you guys that part, but one of the things I didn't tell you about was they didn't thoroughly search my car. <laughs> so, like, 
they pulled out the suitcases that had weed in them, but they didn't go through the glove box or the little sunglass thing or any of that stuff. So when I got my car back like a year and a half later, I'm at the impound and I'm just like, they fucking, I bought a Starbucks that morning. It was like a, a ice latte, like the it. Trenta and they fucking left it oh. in the front, like in the, the cup holder. So when I pulled it out, it just looked like a cup of hair. Like it had turned into a cup of hair. I'm like, ah, I just fucking slam that against the you car next to your Starbucks, baby. I, I know. It's like fucking abortion just falls out of it <laughs> with like parts of teeth and hair. Did it just like, reek in there too? I threw it like at a, like, I think like two cars over because I was just like, but in your place. car though, like, no, did it, it didn't it, smell actually. Huh. Um, it didn't smell at all, which was kind of nice, but it was like outside too. So. Uh, I don't know. Just kind of had like a like a cold smell to it, you know. Yeah. Um, and then they had all these drugs in there that they just didn't find, and I was wondering why they weren't charging me with them. <laughs> so I was like, okay. Well, what do you do when you have a bunch of drugs in front of you and you're on a police property? And they're like, yeah, just drive it out of here. <laughs> so I just did all of them right there, <laughs> really, to make sure that they wouldn't, you know. I don't want to get caught with these. <laughs> so I just did like a big chunk of them. Then which drugs? Ah, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it was a big bag of nothing. I just the Flintstone vitamins. <laughs> <laughs> nothing I want to jeopardize my sponsors with. <laughs> right on. Right on. Um, but yeah. Oh, yeah. So I got my car back and then uh, $3,000 in fines and like a fuckload of fees and court fees, like my lawyer fee and all that stuff. Oh, yeah. And the like, Lost the product. Lost product yeah. was probably the worst of it all. It was probably like, I think it ended up being around like 50 grand is Jesus. what everything cost me. Yeah. Fuck. My, my DUI over the course of three years cost me about 20 grand, 22 grand. Oh, yeah. Uh, nowhere near 50. Jesus. Yeah, it was a bummer, man. I didn't lose bummer. any like, you know, product or anything like that. I just had to pay it. You didn't lose your store. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> Did I you have a blow and go? Yeah. I had nice. to do it an extra year after I violated probation. Jesus. Yeah. Oh no. Yeah, I was like I was like 10 months into a year of probation and then uh I vi I violated and uh I came to see my PO and there was a cop there. And uh they took me to jail for the weekend and then the the uh, judge gave me another year of probation and one of the stipulations was the blow and go. Was this mm. in Texas? Mm -hmm. This is 2009 through like 2011, 12. God, you're, right we got to like over, rehash like, your story a little bit. Yeah. Doesn't, I was like, right when that was over, I was like, I got the fuck out of Texas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dewey's somebody who's don't like fucking with. Yeah. You know. Well, dude, now I don't what, uh, <laughs> fair enough. What shows do you have that you can plug so that people are interested in checking out the dope show? Um, next weekend, I'm going to be opening for Adam Carolla. That's well, hold Comic on. Club. This is going to come out on, I think, the 28th of February. Uh, well, last weekend, I opened for Adam Carolla, <laughs> uh, which was really tight. It's a great experience. Great guy. Um, looking forward to doing more of those. Uh, but after that, yeah, the 28th, there is a dope show on the 20th. Uh, two days before that, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then there is a the next dope show after that, I think, is like the 18th or 19th of March. And those are like the next gigs I got. In Where March. are those ones at? Um, Tacoma Comedy Club, Spokane Comedy Club, their monthly homes. And then uh, the big one, of course, on 420. If you're not in those areas, uh, I'll be doing four dope shows on 420 at Everett, Bremerton, Tacoma, and Spokane. Plenty of tickets to all those locations. We got great headliners, an amazing host that are replacing me for the the shows that I can't make it to. Uh, so it's gonna be a great, great day. Which one are you gonna be at? Tacoma. I'll be at the Everett one. Oh fuck yeah! Yeah, I might pop over and say hi. Yeah, it, come on in, man. It's a beautiful it's, theater. Have you been to the Everett Historic? Yeah, I did it for uh, Jose Bolaños nice. show, and nice. it's a fun place to play. How are this? Like, do you are you guys already selling tickets? Tickets are on sale. They went on sale last week. Um, every year it's been sold out besides uh, not last year, but the year before that. <laughs> what? Last two years have not been so great. Where can people COVID, get tickets? Uh, they can get them 
if they just go to my website, which is whosmokesweed.me, it'll take you to the Facebook links, which will take you to the Everett Historical Theater. So I guess you could just go straight there. <laughs> <laughs> and then for social media, where can people follow your stuff? Um, I'm high BS at everything, or you can just find all my links on my website, which is tylersmith.live. Yeah. Oh, what's in the future for the dope show? Like, are you planning on, do you want to film it? Do you want to turn it into something? So I, one of my venues used to film every episode. So we have like 10 shows that we could do something with. Um, yeah. Trying to sell it to a network would be great or just keeping it and just doing what I'm doing and then eventually making it a live show so we can get like some online views. That'd be really cool. Um, but yeah, there's like, two directions, either franchising it out or just really owning the shit out of it. And uh, right now it looks more like I'm doing the owning the shit out of it. Minus 420. <laughs> I mean, that's a badass thought just to stream it. Right. On YouTube channel. Yeah. yeah, people, yeah. Can, people can so come and gander and people in Wisconsin that want to see your shit. <laughs> Dude, if you do it, Reddit <laughs> is a spot. Oh like, yeah. For streaming sure. right directly on Reddit. I know a few people that do that and it's, it's sort of like untapped in terms of like people are streaming on Instagram and yeah. and, and yeah, Oculus yeah. too. You like that? I love Oculus. It's fucking streaming on Oculus. Just something with Oculus. I sell the games, but uh, Oculus is just great. That's an, that's that's a whole. I don't want to get you fucking into hour. that. Yeah, uh, right where hour. can people find your stuff on social media? Because I know this is your favorite part of the show in America. And. <laughs> At um, I know we're trying to be funny. <laughs> I'm not. I just don't have a big social media. He's always like, this way about his social. He's very like, sensitive about it. I'm not sensitive. I, I just, just calm down. Okay. I'm Gardtron five thousand. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna go add you after. <laughs> <laughs> uh, on Instagram, I'm guard underscore dog on Twitter. And uh, nice. if you just look up guard on Facebook, that's my fan page. G A R D guard. Sounds good. That'll have a lot of the web series that I wrote and produced. I'll have like videos, the college humor videos that I did. And, uh, and, uh, you can also call me. My, my personal phone number is. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I got to say a couple things for if you've watched this episode so far on YouTube, or I forgot to fucking say this, but if you like the episode, hit like or subscribe. Uh, or hit the notifications bell in the top right corner so you don't miss any of our content. If you got yeah, questions for questions either John, sir, comments for John or Tyler, just comment them please make below. Sure, make sure to submit them. <laughs> <laughs> and as always, uh, make sure to rate and review us. If you're watching us, God damn it. <laughs> I hate you, John Guard. As always, follow us on Instagram at FNFPod. Tyler, thanks for coming on. We're gonna leave you with Jaga. I just make the waves, I don't write them. I can hear the lyrics in my spirit as I write them. Why you wanna walk and talk just like them? I can't get caught up in all the hype and the excitement. I just make the waves, I don't write them. I can hear the lyrics in my spirit as I write them. Why you wanna walk and talk just like them? I can't get caught up in all the hype and the excitement. Welcome to my wave pool, my wave pool. 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 Welcome to my wave.